I'm kind of a paranoid person, and I always think about the worst things that can happen in situations. And, you know, you hear a sound in the middle of the night, you go out in the living room, everybody's done it, whether it's your girlfriend sends you out there, your wife sends you out there, you go out there. And it was just about that idea of what would happen if somebody was there and how would you react in that moment when you realize that it wasn't your suspicions, it was actually somebody. I was on a plane flying from Japan to Los Angeles and I had this like little stack of four scripts to read and I just flipped through them and I got to The Strangers and I thought, oh, this should be good. I don't know why I thought it was gonna be a comedy. Like, I was like, the apartment. <laughs> I had no idea, nobody told me anything about it, and just immediately from the first two pages, I was just completely riveted. Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? The characters were written so beautifully. There was so much depth to Kristen and James and their relationship. I was drawn to that story, and then the terror that they go through was just unimaginable. It's this massive psychological style thriller horror that's simple. I guess it's the idea that it could happen to anybody, you know? I've had weird things happen in my house and it's terrifying, so I think all of us can sort of identify with that in a sense, about an, an, a noise in the basement. You think someone's down there and this time someone is down there. No one out of here. Nobody, come here. It will make everybody second guess what they're going to do when their doorbell rings, when their door gets a knock on it. And it makes you realize that people do the craziest things without any rational thought. You want me to go talk to her? They don't want to talk. You know, they want something. People just don't stand out there staring at us like that. So many movies and so many stories kind of come about, especially horror films, with characters that don't know each other that are brought together. But for me, there was something interesting about characters that have been together, that know each other, and tension between them could work with the tension that the strangers would bring into that situation and vice versa. I'm so sorry it wasn't the way you thought it would be. I've never been in a film before where it was just me and another actor in every scene together. It's really a challenge. I mean, it's just the two of us, you know? So I've never worked so hard or so closely with another actor. I had the luxury of knowing that it was her when I went in an audition, so you knew that if she was doing it, it was going to be pretty good. And even when we have sort of bad takes or takes that aren't great, you can go watch the monitor and there's still something a little going on. It's not just blank. I'm gonna open the door and I just want you to run, okay? Well, it's just been by far the hardest film I've ever been a part of, not just physically, but emotionally. And, you know, usually in a film, you have a couple emotional scenes, if that, Action. that you're dreading getting to, and it just zaps everything out of you just to get through that one day. And this has been two months of that every single day. And... I didn't even know I really had it in me, especially after having a baby and being a mom. And you think like, oh, I'm so old now. You know, it's just really interesting to see your own strength. There's somebody out there. I saw a man at the back door, and he's wearing a mask. What do you mean, like, like a ski mask? What? No ski fucking mask. mask! There's something about not being able to see who's coming after you, not being able to see the faces. When we walk into a room, we judge the people around us. We look at their eyes, we look at their features, we try to decide if they're friend or foe. And if you take away those things, it makes you inherently kind of vulnerable to those people. What do you want? Pin up and doll face. They almost look like you could buy their masks at any dime store in any small town. Just a small plastic Halloween mask where anybody could have it. And then for me, my mask is made out of cotton and it's almost like a burlap sack that just fits over where again, Action. anybody could go into their bar and into their kitchen and find something and sew it together and make it. And again, that makes it that much more scarier because it's feasible to anybody and accessible to anybody. Maybe it's the juxtaposition between what they're doing and what their masks are. It just kind of puts you in a place of, I don't understand this. Like, I, I, what is the meaning of this? So your, your mind is searching for the meaning of it. And that's what makes it so disturbing is that you can't come up with anything. Why are you doing this to us? I think it's difficult for them. It's definitely hard because, 
You know, so much of acting in films is in your eyes. You're gonna die. It is difficult, but it's also kind of freeing in a way. You become so much more menacing. It's interesting to kind of feed off the reaction from having a mask on. I'm still feeling the same things behind the mask. I mean, I guess it's challenging for Liv, although I think it's terrifying for her not to be able to see any emotion on my face. The way you convey character is by your movement, by your posture, the way you look out of the holes that you're given to view out of it. You know, you can convey every emotion you need. I think I was really fortunate that this isn't 1972 where the guy that was playing Leatherface was just like a guy from the crew or something. This was about trying to, to build that character that would never be on screen so that those things were always going on behind the mask. Laura, kind of move around more. You can move around, it's okay. Okay. Using, okay. using the flashlight? Using the flashlight. I turned 29 just before I started the movie, and he was still 28 at the time, and I thought, oh, my God, I'm really getting old. I can't believe I'm about to work with a director who's younger than I am. Let's do one where your face is more towards camera, totally passed out, and then let's do the last one where you'll put a little bit more fight into it. That gives me three different options. This is the beginning of his career. He's never really directed before, and he's written some amazing things. He really has this incredible understanding of of everything as a whole, the broad picture of, of not only our characters, but also the strangers. He's been great, I mean, especially with the heavier emotional stuff and setting it up and not shooting it all day and having two cameras going and capturing those moments that are so heightened that it's, you are not having to repeat things over and over and over again and then it doesn't get stale. The director side of me sometimes argued with the writer side of me. I'd never directed a movie before, and so to be able to fall back on the story in moments where I was facing a challenge as a director I'd never faced before, the key that kind of held everything together is I knew where I wanted the story to go. I'm sure some people would want to put more, more blood and guts, and or people would want more of a resolution in some way, like more of a reason, but Brian knows that that's the charm of this film, so. Didn't want to touch it. Why are you doing this to us? Because you were home. And to me, perspective is really important in horror. And I wanted to try to do something where it's like you're dealing with it as they're dealing with it. And so I think there's reasons that this thing can happen, just as there's reasons lots of crimes can happen. But to the victims, you don't always know those things. It's fun to sit and talk about why these characters are in this place and why they're doing the things they're doing. I think what motivates the strangers is hopelessness and alienation. I think that they're motivated by trying to have power and control when in their lives they don't. There is something appealing about them. They're not little boys in closets, you know, they're not supernatural. They're just people, man. Is Tamara here? They just decided to to kill some people for whatever reason, whatever deranged reason went on in their head. They thought it, they'd get kicks out of it or something. And then you got them on the house? You sure? I don't think they get caught, no. I don't. I don't know why I would say that. I guess because uh, I like to think that they won't. <laughs> I don't want them to get caught. Nah, they get away and they do it again a couple months down the road. You don't want them to get caught because you, want, you don't want people to think there was an end to this story. You don't want people to think that evil was overtaken by good, that it's, it had a start, a middle, and an end because this story doesn't have an end. This, you need, the people need to leave this film knowing that this is possible to happen to anybody in any town in America. <laughs>